There are a lot of different bikes out there these days and deciding what sort is best suited to you can often feel like a challenge. One thing that may stop you picking a gravel bike as your machine of choice is the fact that it's going to be slower. But how true is that statement in a number of different scenarios? Today, I'm putting my gravel bike up against my road bike on varying speeds and terrain to see how they'll stack up against each other. What will really be the main factor that slows the gravel bike down? Time for a bit of GCN Does Science. So this is the bike that I'm putting to the sword today. My Canyon Grizzle set up full gravel mode, proper baller, widest tyres possible, my Pirelli Cinturato mixed terrain tyres, designed for when the muddy gets a bit sloppy, but also to be ridden fast down the line too. And it's going up against my Orbea Orca road bike with 28 mil tyres in, Pirelli P0s, the sort of setup that I would use if I was lining up in a bunch race. Now, there are differences between the two bikes, but if you're watching this, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by how much faster the gravel bike is compared to your expectations. I entered one into a road race in a separate video earlier in the year, and I myself was honestly pretty blown away by how fast that bike was able to cope with things. So today I wanted to examine that in a series of tests, looking at how both bikes perform on the flat, on a climb, and also their acceleration at different speeds. And I know what you're saying, my gravel bike is set up full gravel beast mode, 50 mil wide tires and I could of course have swapped that for thinner, faster tires. You could have gone for pretty much any road tire on a gravel setup. But today I wanted to have the full gravel setup ready to tackle anything so I could really examine the road bike and the gravel bike when it's at either end of the spectrum. Right then, first up, we're gonna put both bikes head to head on the flat at varying speeds. So I've got a one kilometer stretch of road behind me, pretty flat, and to begin with, I'm gonna ride at 24, 25 kilometers an hour, pretty easy, the sort of endurance pace you might hold for a longer ride. I'm gonna see what the difference in power between the two bikes when you're going at that same pace. Then I'm gonna ramp things up to 38, 39 kilometers an hour, Pretty blustery and rainy today, so that is gonna be a max effort given the conditions. And after that, I'm gonna ramp me up even more to a motor pace drafted effort, replicating what I do in a group ride maybe, or if I was in the bunch in a race, and seeing what the power is between the two bikes to ride at those paces. Let's see the differences between the two bikes at those different speeds. Right then, time to jump back onto the gravel bike and repeat those runs, at varying speeds, see how chunky tires the gravel bike compares. I am a little bit nervous about those higher speeds because I was pushing as hard as I could there into a headwind. I'm not, I'm not sure how the gravel bike's gonna cope or if it's even gonna be able to match the pace behind the bike, but let's see. Results are in then, runs are done. Legs are a little bit tired already. I'm gonna delve into these results a bit later on and try and unpick some of the reasoning behind what is going on here. Now though, I think it's time to find a climb. The gravel bike up against the road bike. The road heads uphill. Next up then, the hill climb. And we've got a pretty typical climb coming up here that I'm gonna put both bikes onto. The sort of one you'd encounter on your group ride in the local area where we ride next to GCM Mega Base. Pretty steep, 600 meters long. The one you're gonna try and hang on on and not get dropped. How will the gravel bike go against the road bike though? Will the coconut hit the beach and create a pina colada? 
or will it be a bang to the head? Time will tell. Let's get into it though. Nothing like a climb to start the day. Here we go. Come on, gravel bike. We're off. Accelerated into it pretty well. Of course, the gravel bike comes with easier gearing options. So I think that'll benefit me. But as we get onto the more gradual slopes of this climb, the road bike most probably will push ahead. Let's give it an effort though. Let's see how we get on. Whoa. Right then, gravel bike has had its time in the sun up the climb. Now it is time for the road bike. I'm interested to see how it's gonna go because the gravel bike felt pretty fast. I think the advantage here with the road bike, I reckon it's gonna accelerate better into the climb and also pick up speed a bit more just as that gradient levels off. Three, two, one, hammer off. Right, <sighs> straight into it, up to speed quick out of the saddle and whack into this gradient, off the gun. Whoa. Absolutely flying up this initial gradient. Whoa, it's slippy though, and I am struggling a bit more in the rain. Now, if I was in a race, I was trying to hang on to a group here. This is where I have to up the pace, get myself to a higher speed and hold it to the line. Through the gears, one. Ah, one's about all I got. And here we are. Whoa. Results are in then, both runs complete on both bikes and really interesting results actually. Different to what I was expecting. Last up then, I'm gonna look at the acceleration of the different bikes. This is quite important when you're getting back up to speed after stopping at a junction, maybe re-accelerating after slowing down for a corner or just catching up your mates when the speed is going up and down, varying a good bit. So vital part of our riding. First though, I'm gonna test it on the gravel bike. And I'm gonna do this by accelerating from a standing start to 45 kilometers an hour and seeing how long it takes me to hit that speed. And then I'm gonna repeat that on the road bike and look at the difference in power and time to get to that top end speed. Big old effort coming up, right. Let's give it a whirl. Try and keep this as fair as possible between the bikes. Standing start, three, two, one. All right, we're off. <clears throat> Straight up to speed, through the gears. 900 watts, I'm up to 14k an hour. 30k an hour now. Get the punch on through to 45. 36, 38, ah, 39. I'm struggling at 39. Like a little mini Cooper. I can't quite get up to speed. Forty! The mini Cooper's dying! Forty! It's all I got in me. Oh, 40k an hour then. Didn't quite make it 0 to 45. My little engine ran out of speed and steam. I'm gonna look at the power in a second now though. Get my road bike. Repeat the effort. Woo! Three, two, one, hammer up! Oh, up to 45k an hour. Through the gears, like butter. 30k an hour already. Ah, approaching 40, where I failed miserably before. Pushing through. Forty good hour. Ah, 42. I definitely accelerated at the start. 
with more pace than when I was on the gravel bike. Still though, didn't manage 45k an hour. The speed definitely increased at faster rate. Now though, I need to recover. I need to get inside and avoid the next rain shower and really delve into what's been going on here. Look at some results. Right then, I've made it back to the comfort of the GCN set. I'm out of the rain, out of the wind, and I've had a bit of time just to delve into some of the results which we managed to get from the day. A lot of riding involved. Really interesting as well just to, to go into this. So starting with the climb, this was the one that surprised me the most because I thought the gravel bike is a bit heavier than the road bike I was using. A few kilograms in difference. Tires much wider, much heavier too. So I thought on the climb, the road bike would absolutely smash it. But it was pretty much exactly the same. I even went back and did a 350 watt controlled effort. So reduced my power by about 25%. And still, there isn't really much in the time when you take into account margin of error. It kind of goes to show that weight maybe is a little bit overrated on these sort of climbs. And the, the gravel bike wasn't at a disadvantage here. Moving on to the flat runs, and this surprised me a little bit actually, because when we looked at each speed, so I started off with that slow speed, gentle riding, around 180 watts sort of area, pretty much exactly the same sort of effort. There really wasn't much difference, but there was a difference as the speed increased, became much more pronounced between the two bikes. So I did a sort of flat out effort over the kilometer, rolling into it, managed around 35, 38 kilometers an hour, terminal velocity, was heading into the headwind. Power was relatively similar between the two bikes, but the gravel bike was about two kilometers an hour slower at this speed, which is quite a lot with similar relative power output. So it shows that over the course of a ride, if you take that into account, say for a four or five hour ride, that, that is the difference between hanging onto a group and getting dropped. There's a, there's a solid bit more effort having to be put down there to keep that speed going. I then ramped things up to the motor paced effort at 50 kilometers an hour. And here, I really wasn't quite sure what to expect, but there was a really clear difference between the road and gravel bike. So around 30 watts more power was needed to keep the gravel bike going at a similar speed. And I can tell you it felt like it was a much harder effort as well. I had to really work and really tuck in to get behind the bike and make sure that I could maintain my speed going forward. Last little experiment I did was a kind of naught to 40 kilometers an hour acceleration. And here, this real clear difference actually. The road bike, much faster off the line from a standing start. Actually, it got up to 30 kilometers an hour within 10 seconds, whereas you compare that to the gravel bike after 10 seconds, it was only at 20 kilometers an hour for a pretty comparable power number. So that is quite a big jump. And whilst both bikes reach similar top end speed, that off the line speed, getting going is quite drastically different. And I think that's where you get the increased weight of the gravel bike coming into play a lot more, getting that weight up to speed takes a bit more energy and that is going to slow you down over the course of a long ride. You're stopping, starting, junctions, traffic lights, stopping for whatever reason, getting going again, add that all up. There's a lot of, lot of stop starts in there and that's where you're going to add in a lot more energy expenditure. Time for a conclusion and let's see what we've learned from all this. Starting with weight of the two bikes, I was expecting there to be more of a difference actually, especially on those climbs. I thought that would be the key area where the road bike really outperformed the gravel bike. But in actual fact, when you look at the acceleration, that is where you're losing out if you're riding your gravel bike slightly heavier than the road bike, not as quick off the line. That's all gonna add up over the course of the ride to slow you down. And also that top end speed, there's big differences there, which are gonna add up too. But when you look at those lower speeds, the bikes are pretty similar in how they perform and the power needed to maintain such a pace. So I think the general conclusion to draw is that if you're looking at a gravel bike or a road bike, if your riding style is pretty slow, pretty chill, you're not pushing, you're not looking for a performance orientated, aggressive feel to your riding, there isn't gonna be much of a difference in energy expenditure between the two bikes really. However, obviously, if you are looking for that race feel, you're looking to go as fast as possible, then you are gonna notice the difference between a road and a gravel setup. But that comes with a caveat as well, because I tested these bikes at both ends of the spectrum. My gravel bike was set up full gravel mode. And of course you can swap out the tires, you can go thinner on the tires. And I think there you can really save a good bit of power and bring that gap closer together. 
but really interesting. It was really enjoyable for me to, to delve into these differences between the bikes and I hope you found it useful too and it's allowed you to decide what bike might be best suited to your riding. Let us know down in the comment section below what you thought, if you thought the gravel would be faster, slower, or maybe I was just not riding hard enough. As always, thanks for watching and see you on the next video.